in chapter 1, Paul first begins with greeting the church. In verse 1, he introduces us to the author of the epistle, who was Paul. Paul says three things about himself. Number one, Paul says he was called and chosen by God. The term call is repeated in verses 9, 24 and 28 of chapter 1. He uses the root word kalen, which means call. It implies divine election. Paul secondly says he was called and chosen by God to be an apostle. Apostle is the one who is sent out on a mission. And thirdly, Paul says he became an apostle by the will of God. Note that he uses the same greetings in Galatians, stamping his apostolic authority again in churches that were facing some issues. In verse 2, it introduces us to the recipients of the letter, that is, the church of Corinth. So this epistle was written to the church of God, which is in Corinth. Paul identified the presence of the local church in that verse. He says, to those consecrated and purified and made holy in Christ Jesus. Not only Paul identifies the presence of the local church, Paul also identifies the presence of the universal church, which represents the universal body of Christ. He says, together with all those who in any place call upon and give honor to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So church is two dimensional. We have the local church, which is also the body of Christ. And we have the universal body of Christ, which is also the body of Christ. The next section is Paul's thanksgiving prayer for the church of Corinth. Paul expresses his confidence in the church of Corinth. Paul gives five reasons for giving thanks. Let me share them with you. Number one, Paul says, the church belongs to God. In verse number two, Paul does not speak of the church as my church, but as the church of God. Initially, he stated that if God had not called him, he would not have become an apostle of Jesus and would not have found Jesus. Now, Paul rightfully states the church was also called out by God. Not only Paul, the church of Corinth was also called by God. All those who hear and respond to the call of God are members of the ecclesia of God. Important lesson. Every pastor and leader must remember the fact that the church belongs to God and not to any man. We are only stewards of God's household. Number two, the church is a fellowship of saints. In verse number nine, he says, by him you were called into fellowship. Not to forget, the church of Corinth was in a mess, but Paul says it is still a fellowship of saints. Not to forget that all saints were once sinners. Hence, it is rightfully said, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Important lesson, many people keep changing the church. Dissatisfied church members think that another church in that area will be better. So they keep on swapping churches. Let me tell you, there is no church without any problems. Chapter 1 verse 4 to 9 is a good answer or antidote to this problem. Paul could have given up easily on the church of Corinth, but he never gave up on this church. Number 3. The church is endowed with, the, with all the gifts of God. Verse number 4 to 7. Note, it's not about individual believers. Rather, spiritual gifts have been endowed to the whole church. Not only that, the church has also been enriched with all speech and knowledge, Paul says in verse number 5. Number 4, Paul says the church is also called to serve. A call to salvation is necessarily a call to service. A lesson let me share with you. Each Christian should remember that he is called to serve the Lord. 
Though we all may not be pastors and apostles, but we are still called to serve. Though for some of you, it may take some time to discover we are appointed to serve the Lord in whichever way we can. It is part of our salvation. Lastly and fifthly, the church, Paul says, will be completely sustained by the faithfulness of God. Friends, this five wonderful truths is not only true for the Corinthian, but it is also true for our modern churches today. 